We are back in Sim Safari. I want to see how realistic this game is in terms of how savannas function. Uh, we now have one of these clusters and herbivores and fire have proven to be extremely important in determining savanna structure. We are now in June and July, which is the perfect time for a fire. So we keep on throwing fire at the system and it starts burning and then it just kind of stops. And let's bring in some grasses and immediately now because we have grasses in between the trees the fire is now spreading far more quickly. If there is infrastructure in an area like this it's probably going to get burnt. Oh if you let the ecologist hut burn there it's a good thing. Now if you overgraze this area now that's going to be bad. It's time to have another fire. I think it's time to start another fire. Burn, baby, burn. Fire, more fire. Give me more fire. Oh, shame. The ecologist hut burned down again, starting another fire. Just burned to death and we're going to have a little barbecue over here. No fire, which means we put in another fire. Start another fire. Now I've gone and done something interesting. I've just decided to burn everything. So oh, the ecologist hut just burned down again. So initially we started really with a dense woodland with trees, trees everywhere. But then when, once the uh, grasses started coming in, the trees were not able to establish as well as they should have. We now have also started burning a lot, which have removed a whole bunch of these trees that were standing. So we now really have an open savanna ecosystem. Now we want to do the other extreme. We want to get rid of the grasses and see if we can get all the trees to establish. And the way we would do that is by bringing in all of the grazers. And we are going to overgraze this area and we are going to keep fire out. So no more fires for this ecosystem and this is what typically then would happen if you for example are keeping cattle in an area and let's bring in a whole bunch of hippos here they are walking on land we can also bring them into the river ecosystem there they are a nice little pod swimming around now what would happen if you are have for example a well uh, a cattle farm and you keep out fire because you don't want your fences to burn down or your houses to burn down. You keep out fire in, an, in a savanna ecosystem. Then the trees are not going to get burnt. The seedlings are not going to get burnt because you are excluding fire. But not only that, you are now also overgrazing potentially. You're keeping your cattle in fenced areas. They can't move to other areas. So they are constantly in their specific areas and they are going to eat all the grasses. Open patches like that one there are going to start forming and when that happens tree seedlings that establish there are now not going to get burnt because you have excluded fire and the e ecosystem should then shift from a more open savanna over to a more densely wooded ecosystem. So let's bring in a whole bunch of sable as well. We're not really caring about money at this point. We are not really caring about the extreme density of animals we are putting in here. We just want to overgraze our vegetation and see what happens. Let's bring in a whole bunch of Tommies as well. Thompson's gazelles, basically East Africa's version of a springbuck. They would go and feed on the smaller plants that are between the grasses, but for all intents and purposes, they are seen as grazers in this game. Uh, let's bring in some warthogs or oh, warthogs can really dominate an area as well. The Eastern Cape province of Africa, for example, has got major problems with warthogs that were introduced in, from the savanna ecosystem. They used to have the Eastern Cape warthog, however, they went extinct. So they brought in the warthogs from the savanna and they have escaped and they're basically taking over and causing chaos. And that's uh, really, really bad for the ecosystem. So let's bring in a bunch of warthogs be bad for the ecosystem. Now warthogs in the natural habitat or the savanna warthog in the natural habitat wouldn't be a bad thing. They would actually just be part of the ecosystem. They would be kept in check by things like lions and other predators. But in cases where you don't have lions, they can dominate as well. And that's the case with a lot of invasive species. It's because there's a lack of predators. They tend to take over the ecosystem. And we need, oh, we need a whole bunch of rhinos. Rhinos, a white rhino here. 
uh, are very good grazers or very well they are grazers they've got very wide lips that's where the name comes from uh, wide instead of white it's not referring to the color uh, but it is the the wide mouth that the white rhino has and white rhinos being grazers they feed on grasses using their very wide mouths to go and eat the uh, as much grass as they possibly can at a time whereas your black rhino which is a browser would have a hook lip uh, so they also call it the hook lipped rhino and they are use their hooked lips to actually go and eat the browse the leaves of trees in between the branches they go and eat that so we have put in a whole bunch of wildebeest We've put in a whole bunch of zebras, we've put in a whole bunch of rhinos, all kinds of grazers in a far higher density than we would ever have in a reserve like that. this. And I think we can already see the results of it. Let's have a look on our map here. You can see bare patches forming. Now some of that would be where the uh, burr areas had burned previously, but we are also seeing a whole bunch of dead grasses. So right there where i'm putting the zebra that's a dead grass so that could go and form a dead or bare patch or it can regenerate depending on a very uh, number of variables looking at this area this is actually a, a good case study notice in this area we've had a whole bunch of savannah hares that have eaten the grasses we've kept out fire fire hasn't burned in this area and look at how the trees are dominating the theory then would be that this would also happen in the rest of the park where we are now seriously overgrazing. And let's have a look and see whether that is actually the case. So I'm going to speed up here and see what happens in the next few years. So after having left the game for quite a bit to run in the background here or to run along, we have got a few interesting things. First of all, the island here, which has all the skinks and had some savannah hares, that is now basically only trees, only trees left, almost no grasses left here. It's also because we don't have any browsers on this island. Next to it, we have an island that has a whole bunch of grazers, but also has some elephants present on it. And in this case, there are a few trees here as the grasses get outcompeted or uh, gets overgrazed. Then the trees start establishing. However, they are coming from this side generally and they are being eaten by the elephants as well. So they are unable to actually take over this island in particular. On this uh, next island here, this year we've got nothing. So we've got some trees and grasses. On this island here, we also again have a few trees that are left here but also quite a lot of grass is still present, mainly because this area isn't really overgrazed. And that brings us to this part here. The central part of the map really seems to be severely overgrazed. However, only a few baobab trees are present. And I think what we need in order to kickstart this to become a wooded savanna again, we need to introduce a few trees. And I am going to introduce... Which one? The Leadwood, I believe. I think let's bring in Leadwood. And let's bring in... Which one did well as well? I think let's bring in a few Marulas. Let's bring in a few Marula trees. So now we have a source for the trees to start spreading. While at the same time we are still overgrazing the grasses. Without the trees now being eaten by too many browsers. So let's see what now happens does the do the trees actually spread from this area or not just to make sure let's bring in a whole bunch more grazers zebras and wildebeest so i've brought in a whole bunch more let's have a look still what else we've got in our reserve on this side lots of grazers but also quite a lot of impala which are mixed feeders they feed on grasses and trees there are still a few trees holding out, and as I said, that, that one died. Uh, so there are a few fewer trees now still holding out. Baobabs seem to be doing quite well in this park of ours. And on this side, occasionally it is severely overgrazed, and then other times, like now, it is actually doing quite all right. And I think the, uh, the whole thing here is that the animals are actually moving. 
and that's what typically would happen in large ecosystems as one area gets overgrazed there's not enough food to sustain all the animals so they move to another area so this area is now severely overgrazed and the animals in theory should then move to an area that isn't overgrazed so they would then move to this area however here they're also starting to overgraze so they would move to an area that has all the fresh green grass which would now be this area so the animals should move to this area and then start overgrazing it and allowing this area here to recover to have the grasses uh, regrow again however if you go and fence off areas the animals can't move away from this area and they continuously overgraze and it's given me an idea for the next video which i'm going to make which will really test that hypothesis does this game really show what happens but i'm going to let the simulation run a bit longer i see our leadwoods basically have died or all all have died out our baobabs are still surviving and we've got a few marulas still alive although they're not doing very well let's have a look the trees that are thriving here are the baobabs and knobthorn interestingly enough okay so let's introduce some knobthorn knobthorn actually being extremely palatable acacia nigrescence so if you were to in theory have a nice lot of knob thorns it would really be a very nice park let's have a look here we introduce a whole bunch that is now our uh, source for new individuals and let's see whether it manages to spread to the rest of the park so i'm going to run it for another two years or a year or two and then we'll see whether they are, it's able to spread to the rest of the park Okay, we are now a little over a year in and most of our trees have died and I think that is because we do have quite a population of impala that moved through this area as well at some point. So we have almost no trees left here. Uh, so unfortunately this seems to have been a failure of an experiment. We do have a few trees that seem to have established here in this area where there are fewer of the impalas around. The grasslands appear to be doing extremely well to this side but have completely disappeared from this area so overgrazing has resulted in most plants on this side dying and in fact here we also have almost no plants left they are here and there there's a lead wood over there a baobab over there and we have that's it the rest are all dead a few grasses here and there but the elephants and the grazers that we've put in here the oryx and what else have we got in terms of grazers warthogs as well they have eaten basically everything and now their population is also dying away uh, so or dying off so very few uh, organisms left on this island they've basically eaten themselves to death on this island however the savannah hares have disappeared and as a result grasses have managed to establish which has now resulted in the trees kind of being outcompeted by the grasses again so the grasses we're now having a, a mixture of a savannah ecosystem over here and on this uh, section of the reserve we've got something that just vanished completely over there and we've got quite a few grazers left quite a few grasses dying off a little bit a little bit too soon to tell what's going to happen here but overall the park is having a whole bunch of interesting things happening but I think we are going to call that a day for today. I will check back with you next week. We're going to either carry on with this park and see what else we can muck about on over here. Or we are going to start a new little reserve where I'm going to test a few things. So tune in next Friday to see what happens with the park here or the new park we're going to establish. And I'll see you then. Until then, stay safe. <laughs>